right, let's get going here. We're going to do some year-end planning today. Uh, our team spends a ton of time starting now and, and getting uh, ready in the next six weeks or so to make sure that year-end is successful for everybody. Uh, you know, there's a lot of final things that need to be done uh, in order for year-end to go well for all of our clients. You know, obviously the end goal is to get W-2s out the door to everybody uh, in early January. And we do a lot of prep between now and the end of the year to make sure that all of that goes well. Uh, and we need definitely need some help from all of you in order to get to that uh, that finish line. So, uh, you know, today we're just going to go over our year end checklist. We've sent this out uh, electronically. We've sent this out via mail this year, uh, and we're going to talk about some important things for you to give to us, things that you need to start thinking about, deadlines and so forth uh, to get ready for year end. So year end does definitely start now, right? We get ready starting to beginning of November to think about year end. So a prep that can be done to get yourself ready. Um, you know, we're just kind of run through some of these things to think about. Not everything is going to apply to everybody, right? Every company is a little bit different. Uh, every company is uh, has different needs and, and requirements. Uh, but we want to just make sure we're as encompassing as we can. We certainly keep track of uh, any specific client needs in certain areas. So we probably will reach out to you for some things. Uh, some things are, are kind of more self-reportable. We may not know about them, uh, but for the most part, uh, we've got a pretty good handle on what people need. So um, starting in November, we really encourage you to verify all of your company information is correct with us. So, uh, you know, generally speaking, state, federal tax ID numbers, we've got all the information. We double check that when we get you set up. Those don't change. We should be fine. Um, but legal name and your address, right? If your mailing address has changed, we definitely need to know that. Uh, we mailed out a mailer, you know, three weeks ago, and we've gotten a bunch back for incorrect addresses. So, uh, you know, we will be mailing you W-2s, so we need to make sure we have the correct address to get you those W-2s. So if we don't have a, an updated address, uh, please send that along to us. If you have uh, unemployment rates that are changing, make sure those are correct, right? We want to make sure we get that information. Uh, all that company information is correct so that we're processing your payroll correctly. Some things we know, some things we don't know. Uh, but it's important that if you have something that's changed, please get that to us. The next thing you want to really start looking at is verifying all your employee contact information. Uh, and starting with November, in November 1st, every payroll that's run has uh, an employee contact audit report that goes into the report package. So uh, take a look at those. Make sure their addresses are correct. Make sure their names are spelled correctly. Most importantly, make sure their social security numbers are correct. Uh, IRS can impose up to a $550 penalty per incorrect w uh, excuse me per incorrect w2 in the event that there's a wrong social so check those make sure they are correct not only does that make a headache for you it makes a headache for us it makes a headache for the employee uh, we need to file corrections if those do not get done correctly it does happen every year and we do make those adjustments uh, but if you can just take a peek at those compare them to your w4s ask your employees to check those you know that will help ensure that there are no errors or issues if you are subject to Affordable Care Act reporting, which means that you have 50 or more full-time equivalent employees, start thinking about that. Getting your health insurance information together, getting your eligibility criteria together. Uh, we've got a pretty good pulse on who this impacts, and we reach out uh, to you in that uh, in that time. Nextly, start looking at your employee classifications. So, you know, do you have employees who are salaried that should be hourly, right? In the state of Maine in 2022, this will change next year, but for this year, uh, an employee must make $735 a week in order to be a salaried employee. In addition to that, there are also duties tasks that must be met. So think supervisory duties, uh, those types of things. So if you have someone that you're just paying salary because it's convenient, you may want to take a look at that. Uh, not everyone can and should be a salaried employee. So uh, Department of Labor has been coming down on this. So it's just something to look at, uh, particularly if you have those salaried employees. The W-2 adjustments, that's a biggie, and we will, we're will we working on that. Our team is going to be getting that out. Um, we know a lot of these, you know, because people do them year after year after year. Uh, but these are really important to start getting that information together. So things like shareholders' health insurance, shareholders' mileage. If you offer group term life insurance and the benefit is over $50,000, that's a taxable fringe benefit to your employees. If they have th third-party sick pay or short or long-term disability, those items need to be reported and gotten onto the W-2. If you have other fringe benefits or non-cash payments like a gift card that you've given somebody or your gym membership or any other type of uh, fringe benefit that you've given to an employee that needs to be taxed, we'd like to get all of those items before December 16th, right? 
So start thinking about that. Pull out your health insurance uh, statements for the year. You know, start getting your mileage information together. If you have uh, any of those things, start getting those things together, right? We don't need them right away because the numbers probably aren't going to be finalized for a few more weeks, but just start getting that stuff together. We always like to remind everybody to start looking at their 2022 retirement contributions. So if you or someone on your team or one of your employees would like to maximize uh, their pre-tax benefits for 2022, think about that. Do you need to make adjustments to their contributions before the end of the year? So for this year, the maximum 401k and 403b contribution is $20,500 plus a $6,500 catch-up, so $27,000 total. Uh, so if you're have you know you're not on track to hit that, maybe you need to make an adjustment before the end of the year. Uh, and the same for a simple IRA, it's a $14,000 pre-tax contribution plus a $3,000 catch-up over 50 years old and for a total of $17,000 potentially as well. So again, if you are if you want to make those contributions, now's the time to think about it. Get those deductions adjusted before the end of the year or run a special payroll to hit that deduction. Uh, so you want to make sure you get that maximizing those pre-tax benefits. There are other pre-tax benefits, um, HSAs, HRAs, you know, FSAs, all those items may also be pre-tax benefits you want to maximize. So take a look at all those and uh, get those ready to go. Finally, thinking about holiday payroll. So obviously last week was Veterans Day. Uh, the banks were closed on Friday. So anyway, the Friday payday got pushed to Thursday and that impacts processing and timelines and all that stuff. Uh, similarly, we have Thanksgiving come up, coming up. Thanksgiving is the Thursday holiday. The banks are closed. Our office is closed for the holiday. Uh, on Friday, for Friday paydays, the banks are open. So we should be processing everything on time, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for Friday paydays. If you have a Thursday payday, just let us know if you'd like it to be paid on Friday or on Wednesday, we can make those adjustments. Always keeping in mind that we do like to have a 48 hour lead time in order to get uh, payroll submitted. So think about that as you're processing, okay? Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, the banks are open. So payrolls will deposit correctly, uh, but our office is closed. So keep that in mind as well. So moving into December, now it's time to start doing some things, right? So we've gotten ourselves ready in November and now we've got to start doing this stuff. So if you have any manual or avoided checks, so throughout the year, uh, you know, Joey needed 50 bucks for something, you wrote him a check, that does need to get put onto payroll. Any employee that's been paid out of the company needs to put that on payroll. Uh, so we need to do an adjustment for that. So please get that to us. If you need to have any checks avoided, let's get those done before the end of the year, right? So we want to make sure that those adjustments get reported correctly. Uh, again, we like to have all of these things done before the 16th of December. We try to get that uh, third week in December. That's our kind of cutoff before we get into Christmas and crazy time as well. So um, if you have bonuses you'd like to run, get those to us. We like to have at least five days for bonuses. When it comes to running bonuses, we always try to get normal payrolls run first, right? We have deadlines for normal paydays. So please give us as much notice as you can for those bonus payrolls. If you would like a special handling of those payrolls, uh, you know, let us know that as well. We are always gonna ask you, do you want live checks? Do you want direct deposits? Do you want them grossed up? So if you say someone's getting a $500 bonus, are they getting a $500 bonus? Or they're gonna have to pay the taxes? Or are you covering the taxes and they're gonna get a $500 net check, right? We ask those questions. What deductions do you want taken out? Do you want retirement contributions taken out? Do you want insurances taken out? Um, all of those things, we're gonna ask you those. So please ask, let us know when you're submitting those. And again, give us as much time as possible, lead time on those. Uh, so we can get that stuff done. Like I said, we always try to work on regular payrolls, regular payday deadlines, and then we move on to those bonus payrolls. So sometimes it takes a little bit longer for those. Again, talking about that third-party sick pay. So if you have short or long-term disability benefits and you're getting that, please get that stuff informa information to us. Again, we talked about those fringe benefits and the W-2 adjustments. So if you have those shareholders health insurance, mileage, group term life, third-party sick pay, personal use of company vehicle, uh, any fringe benefits like gift cards or, or anything else, get those to us. December 16th is the deadline, right? If you are submitting things like shareholders health insurance, mileage, uh, important things, might be a good idea to run that by your accountant first, right? Make sure you're giving us the correct number. I cannot tell you how many times we go through, we do all these W-2 adjustments, the accountant goes to do the taxes in the spring and they say, no, 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 that's the wrong number. And we have to go amend the owner's W-2s. Uh, so take a look at those before you submit those to us. Run it by your accountant first, please, and thank you. Usually around the end of December, the states will issue new unemployment rate changes. So your unemployment rate is going to change every year. Uh, it may go up, may go down. 
Last couple of years, it's gone up because of the COVID, uh, you know, surge in unemployment claims. So everyone's rates have gone up in the last couple of years. I think we may see some stabilization this year. I've not heard from Department of Labor what that's going to look like. Uh, but when you get those rate notices, please submit those to your processor. We do have a means to go to the state. There's called an unemployment rate exchange. We will go out and get those if we can, but sometimes we can't get those. So we need to get the rate from you. We do not have, if I call the state right now and say, what's their rate? They're going to say, you got to call the client. So uh, so we will be collecting those and trying to get that uh, input so that 2023 rates are correct and there's no shortages or overpayments of taxes due. So that's a really important one. We get those letters. Please send those to your processor. Obviously, again, holiday season is upon us. So Christmas and New Year's. So Christmas and New Year's both fall on a Sunday this year. That means Monday is the holiday. So December 26th and January 2nd, both Monday holidays. Uh, our offices are closed. The banks are closed on those days. Again, keep those in mind for processing, right? So uh, we want to make sure that we're not having any surprises when it comes to uh, holiday processing. Lastly, in December, when you process your final payroll of the year, that's your opportunity to take a look at your payroll. Does it all look right? Are there things that are missing? Did you forget to give us something, right? Look at employee names, addresses, social security numbers. Did final benefit deductions happen correctly? Are you paying out PTO? Are the fringe benefits correct? Uh, take an extra look at that final payroll of the year before it gets processed. Make sure it looks good, right? Don't just assume, you know, proper preparation prevents poor performance. That's what my high school geometry teacher always taught me, Mr. Nofell. Uh, so make sure you take a look at that so that we do not have a headache come W2 time. So when we look in January, now we're our goal is to get everybody's W2s out the door. We're going to be working that weekend um, over January 1st. Our goal is to get W-2s out the door the very first week of January, right? So we want to have all this work done so that come January, uh, we can focus on these types of things because a lot of these things are coming up that are going to make your lives more difficult and ours. So um, if you have 1099s that are not on payroll, so if you have contractors you've paid that you need 1099s prepared for, we are happy to get those prepared for you before the end of January. Please just send uh, information over to us. We do have a spreadsheet that we can send to you to fill out and get back to us. We'll get those 1099s turned around and out the door to you, okay? Um, now we know everybody's deductions changes, right? Usually health insurances renew, um, retirement contributions change, all that fun stuff changes in January. So you wanna make sure, get us that information. If you have that information with your last payroll of the year and you wanna get a jump on that, let us know, send it over to us. Excuse me, the last, you know, the first payroll of the year is just as stressful for us as the last payroll of the year. So, uh, so get that information to us as soon as possible. Everyone should have access to ISOLV to make adjustments on their own as they, if they'd like, um, but certainly we're happy to do that as well. So if you have any um, medical or dental or retirement contribution changes to be made, get those to us sooner than later. We're happy to get those updated even before your first payroll of the year. Retirement contribution amounts have changed significantly for 2023 because of uh, the inflation. This is one of the largest increases in contribution maximums uh, in quite some time. Starting in 2023, the maximum uh, pre-tax contributions for 401k and 403b is going to go to $22,500 with a $7,500 catch-up uh, over 50 years old. That's a huge increase, right? It's $3,000 uh, increase year over year. For the simple IRA, it's going to $15,500 and $3,500 for the catch-up. Again, a huge increase there, $2,000 increase on that as well. So if you are making those adjustments to your deduction, if you have folks that want to max out, their, max out their retirement contributions for the year, those are the new rates. Get those to us uh, for the first pair of the year so that there's no surprises or issues. Minimum wage goes up next year, right? So in the state of Maine, minimum wage is now pegged to a CPI increase. This year, uh, the state has announced that minimum wage is going to go from $12.75 to $13.80. Tipped wage is going to be $6.90, right? So there's a big jumps in uh, in minimum wage. So keep an eye on those. Now, with a minimum wage change, that goes into effect with the first payroll of the year, regardless of your pay period. So if your pay period is technically December hours, if you are paying it in January, you must abide by the new minimum wage. It's not a pay period. It's a pay date change, okay? So keep that in mind as well. Obviously, with that, you know, folks are raising wages left and right anyway. A lot of people do raises and increases in January. Uh, so get those over to us as well. 
we can always put rate increases in ISOLD future dated. So even if you give those to us now, you say, hey, this goes into effect January 1st, we put that into ISOLD, uh, obviously on the first payroll of the year, that will automatically adjust. So that's really nice. A few compliance things to start thinking about or continue to think about. So obviously we've been uh, under the main earned paid leave law now for a little while. If you haven't been complying with that, if any business with 10 or more employees must allow for uh, employees to accrue up to 40 hours of vacation time for use for any purpose, okay? So if 10 or more employees, you must give your employees up to 40 hours of paid time off, uh, allow them to accrue that, okay? Please talk to us. We have lots of literature on this. If you don't think you're in compliance, talk to us about that. A new item for 2023, starting January 1st, the state has issued a new law. It says anybody with a vacation policy must pay out any accrued vacation upon an employee's termination. Okay, so if your employee leaves or you fire them, if, they're, if their employment is terminated for any reason, voluntary or involuntary, you must now pay out their vacation time on their last paycheck. Now we've talked to Department of Labor on this. The law is written to say vacation. Department of Labor is taking a very strict interpretation of that, which surprises the heck out of me. So if you have a vacation policy, that this requirement only applies to a vacation policy. If your policy is a sick policy, it's a PTO policy, an earned paid leave, or any other named time off policy, you do not have to pay this out. So if you have a vacation policy, now might be the time to rename it, or you must pay it out when they terminate, okay? So keep that in mind uh, as you're reviewing your policies and getting things ready for next year. We do have an article on this on the blog. We'll be pushing more information out about this. It's been on our newsletter the last couple of months, lots of information on that as well. Next, our mandatory retirement contributions law. So Maine has in, uh, instituted a mandatory retirement program starting on April 1st of next year. Anybody with 25 or more employees effective uh, April 1st must offer a retirement plan, a 401k, a simple IRA, or a number of others, or enroll in a state-sponsored retirement program. Lots of information on this on our website. Actually, if you go to papertrails.com slash retirement, we have a whole guide to this new law. Uh, lots of information on there. 25 or more employees starts April 1st. 15 or more employees must be in compliance by October 1st. And then 2023, April 1st, and excuse me, 2024, uh, any employer with five or more employees will have to, to comply with this new law. So lots of information. We've already done one webinar, was really well attended uh, in September. We will definitely be doing more on this in the spring when the state announces its program, uh, as we know more information about that. The state has been meeting on that. I'm not sure that they're going to be fully ready for April 1st rollout, but we're going to find out uh, and we'll see where it goes and we'll keep everyone posted on that. But think about that. If you don't have a retirement plan uh, for your employees today, you may want to think about putting one in place. Otherwise, you're going to have to contribute to the state's plan. Get, uh, get the most up-to-date labor law posters, right? The state and the federal government require you to post labor laws in your place of employment prominently for all employees to see and benefit from. Uh, there's about a dozen of them or so. There's plenty of companies out there that will you know, charge you an arm and a leg for a big poster. I would encourage you not to pay that money. They're all on our website. If you go to papertrails.com slash resources, all of them are there. All you have to do is print, staple them to the wall in the break room, right? So free, free, free. The government makes them available to free for free to you. Just go ahead once a year, make sure you have the most recent ones because they do change, okay? So just keep an eye on those. Again, go to papertrails.com slash resources. There's a link to labor law posters. They're all free. Don't pay for them, please. Lastly, we're going to get you those W-2s early in January. It is your responsibility to mail those to your employees. We do not mail them to your employees. We're going to send you a big package with a big stack of W-2s. You must put a stamp on them and send them to your employees or physically hand them to them. In the end of January, we're going to get those posted uh, into my HR stuff so that they'll be able to electronically access them. But we choose to get everybody a physical copy first, okay? If you do not get your W-2s by the middle of January in the mail, please call us. We'll get them reprinted for you. We know the mail is wonderful these days, so we want to make sure you get those to get them as well, okay? But you must mail them to your employees. We do not do that for you. As a reminder, you can get our full year-end checklist. You're going to watch this webinar recording. Uh, it'll be posted tomorrow or on our YouTube channel. Go to papertrails.com slash year-end. Lots of great information to get ready for year-end. Again, I talked about uh, papertrails.com slash resources. Click the resources button on our website. There's all sorts of good resources on there 
um, including our upcoming webinar schedule for next year has been posted. All of our blog articles, we have great resources for login and compliance. Uh, those labor law posters are up there, lots of good information there. Uh, and don't forget your employees have access to get all their pay stubs, edit their information, update direct deposits, get their W-2s, uh, and so much more uh, right at myhrstuff.com. One thing before we run off, before we hit the questions, I do just want to discuss the holiday schedule for next year. Our rule is if the banks are closed, paper trails is closed, all the banking holidays, there's 13 now um, next year. Um, those are payroll holidays. Think about that when you're processing. That is in our year-end checklist uh, and may have impacts on your um, processing schedule. So just keep that in mind. This year, one other item. This year, um, some years, there are 53 Fridays, for example, and that causes people with a weekly or biweekly payroll to have an extra payroll in the year. This year is not one of those years where there's 53 of any days of the week. We got lucky this year. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. Next year, I think Monday are 53 Mondays. So that'll be something we have to look at potentially next year. Um, but uh, but this year we're, we're lucking out on the 52 uh, of everything. So no, no scaries there, but uh, questions. So I have a question, Nicole, what reports can I run to verify all company and employee info? So when you run payrolls from now on, actually after November 1st, there is an employee audit and a company audit file, year-end audit file in the report package with every payroll you run, Nicole. Uh, you'll see that in the preview reports and in the report, uh, report archive. Uh, you can go look at those. That will give you all of your employee information, company information as we have it. And again, that will be included in every payroll between now and the end of the year. So you can go ahead and uh, look at those as you're running payroll or after. It doesn't have to be done before. Any other questions or comments, thoughts? Obviously, if you have questions after this, we are recording this. It'll be posted to YouTube probably tomorrow. Uh, we'll send out an email follow-up as well. Uh, John will to get this out to everybody. Uh, and certainly, if you have questions about any of this year in checklist, please feel free to reach out to your processor. Uh, we will be reaching out to you for sure uh, based on what we know you may need to do. So we're not going to leave you out in the cold, but, uh, but definitely reach out with any questions or thoughts that you have. Uh, otherwise, we are not having a webinar next month. We're taking next month off, but we'll be back in January. We're going to do a little bit of an advanced employee management with an iSolved uh, in January. That'll be our kickoff for 2023. I encourage everyone to go on to the website, click that resources tab, get signed up for some of those webinars for next year. And otherwise, I'll let everyone have the rest of the afternoon uh, to enjoy, and we'll talk to everyone very soon.